What if you could save hours every week spending less time on programming while actually delivering better workouts? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Chances are you have hundreds if not thousands of exercises in your head, which is cool, but if you're like me when I first started programming, you would sit down at a blank piece of paper and just stare at it. This is where having ways to categorize and organize all the exercises in your head and all the things that you're gonna learn becomes really valuable. And I believe that the first step to getting to the other side and knowing that you're choosing the right exercises for your client is to start adopting this concept of movement categories. So imagine this, let's pretend someone asked you to take the hundreds and thousands of exercises that you have in your head and organize them in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet, whatever you might use. How would you organize them? This is a question and actual practical that we do even inside of our Axiom Fitness Academy courses because it's the idea of starting to think about exercises and categories and trying to think about what are all the ways that the human body was meant to move and how can I start to put them into columns. And I'm gonna give you guys our way of categorizing exercise in this video, so stay with me. But I believe just this practice alone can get you to start thinking a little bit clearer about your exercises and how you organize things. Are you gonna organize it by upper body, lower body, by muscle groups? I don't think that there's a wrong method, but I'm gonna give you guys what we do at the Academy. If you think about all the exercises that are out there and how they might be put into little boxes, minus some accessory exercises like single joint stuff, bicep curls, but if you think about the big compound moves where your clients are gonna get most of their training, most of the results, how could you break it down? Well, one way of thinking about it is looking at it in what we call our movement categories, right? And we organize it more based upon movements. And I'm gonna tell you why. So thinking about squat, probably a movement, right? That just about everyone should do. Lots of variations of those exercises. So now all of a sudden, you're starting to be able to categorize and catalog all these things that you already have in your head. And I found that the moment I started doing that alone was massively helpful for me to start actually coming up with better programs and take less time to do it. So we got squat. What else do we do with the lower body? Well, we lunge, we hinge, and just about every lower body exercise or movement, like I said, minus some single joint stuff like a hamstring curl or a calf raise, which are great exercises, just about all of our compound movements could be categorized amongst these three. And they all have some unique stances, positions, and challenges. And the idea of this video is more so to give you this concept and the framework of creating movement categories and kind of show you why it's gonna be beneficial. So squat, lunge, hinge, these are three big primary movement categories. Then when we move into the upper body, we keep it pretty simple. We talk about pushing and pulling. All the exercises where I'm either pushing something away or pulling it back into me. This one does get a little bit interesting, a little more complicated as we look at vertical versus horizontal, right? There's more vertical pushing, horizontal pushing, and same thing, vertical, horizontal. And the reason I start to break some of these down is as we start to look at the one of the major benefits of even thinking in this way, of moving categories, is there's some different mechanics and challenges that come into play when we're talking about exercise at the shoulder. More vertical pressing and pulling ends up being more challenging for a lot of people. But it starts to give us this idea of like, okay, I can start to categorize these so it becomes easier when you're sitting down to program and thinking about the clients that you guys might have. And the other one, squat, lunge, hinge, push, pull. There are a lot of other things, right? You could consider a second or a, another category to be locomotion exercises, rotation exercises, carries. I'm gonna put carries here because you guys will see at the end of the video some of the progressions that we have as well. But just the idea that there are other ways. So you could add more, right? This is truthfully meant to be a practice for you. That maybe even after this video, you do this. You sit down and create this, create an Excel spreadsheet, and start to list all the exercises that you know. And again, one of the major benefits is it's beneficial to get all the stuff out of your head and onto a workable platform. Because as you sit down with any client, whether they're a fat loss client, whether they've just started working out and you're doing more basic exercises, whether they're more advanced, Somewhere in their week, I would argue not just once, but probably twice a week, they should be doing each one of these movement categories, right? That alone starts to give you a little bit of a framework for your workouts. You know, if I'm gonna do a full body workout with a client, well, in my mind, maybe I wanna cover most of these major movement categories. I'm gonna choose an appropriate squat variation for them, lunge variation, hinge, push, pull, and obviously you can break it up in a lot of different ways, but this alone, 
starts to just give you a way of organizing your exercises. I'm telling you that this is gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to sitting down and looking at that blank page and you're like, what do I do? Well, I know they need to squat, push, pull, hinge, lunge, or whatever categories you create. And the cool part of this is now you're starting to create your own thought process around exercise and training, which really becomes your system. And I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you wanna save a lot of time that goes into programming in the beginning, you wanna give yourself some systems and some patterns. And this is a really, really simple one to start to sit down and do. And then guess what? As you learn new exercises, you get to plug them into the movement category. And anytime you're trying to figure out where do I progress someone, what's the next routine that I'm gonna take them through, let me just come back and see what I see as the next progression. And that's really where these steps come in. Step one in this process of movement categories is to just sit down and create your own. Or if you want, you can take ours and build that out. So you have the exercises that are there. All the squat exercises I can think of, all the lunge, hinge, push, pull. Step two of this process, probably the more challenging step of the two, is to start to order them putting them in order of difficulty. And this is an actually really interesting concept because a lot of people don't necessarily learn about exercises in the context of the skill that's associated, how challenging is it to teach someone and coach someone, but this is a really important step. If I think about all the squats someone might do, and I'm just gonna throw a couple up here that you guys probably know. Let's say I've got a goblet squat, all right? Let's say I've got a back squat, and let's say I have, I'm just gonna put it in here, I don't know, maybe a hack squat, like an actual machine, right? The idea is that I wanna already have pre-thought out, like what's gonna be the easiest one to teach someone initially? You know, if I think about like this brand new beginner client who doesn't pick up exercises really well, what's gonna be the easiest exercise I can coach them into pretty quickly and have them get a lot out of it? Well, that's gonna be what you consider to be your earlier progressions. And then as you think through all the movements that are there, what order would they go in? What would be the most advanced? Right? Like which one would be the most challenging? Either A, because it's a technical exercise, or maybe there's a lot of mobility that's required of it. As you guys look and you'll find in our movement categories and progressions, the back squat ends up being one pretty much at the peak and pinnacle because of all the demands that it has on the body. And the cool part of this is now you start to have a better thought process. So like, hey, someone comes in, I see how they move, we've done our first session, I'm gonna find that, hey, this is the squat I'm gonna start them out with. We're gonna progress that over the next three to four weeks, and then I already have my movement progression set up, boom, I'm gonna move on to the next one for the next three to four weeks until you feel like they're ready for those additional progressions. Now this is a concept, guys, that took me a long time to figure out. So I don't expect you to have this all done right away. But just to introduce you to the idea, because I think coming up with the exercises to put in each category, that's the simple part. Starting to figure out which one you might consider to be more advanced than the other, takes a little bit more thought and a lot of experience with these exercises. So definitely stick to the ones you know, but even if you could start with this practical and activity of coming up with at least five to 10 of each of the exercises in each movement category, you're gonna have a pretty big Rolodex of exercises that you can work through over time and you're gonna start to have a much better idea of how you can progress clients through them. So this might be a new concept of thinking about exercises as progressions and it might take you a little while to build out, but if you do it right, it's not only gonna make sure that you have a much better plan for long-term progression for your clients, but it's also gonna make sure that you have them set up for success and that they're actually ready for the movements that you're putting them into. And if you wanna head start on the process and you wanna see the baseline progressions that we teach here at the Academy, check out the next playlist on the screen that will run you through them.